Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fortress of Comic News, episode 225. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside the returning international businessman, Mike. <laughs> Yes, I'm here for an episode and then gone for another ne- episode and then back for another episode. Um, <laughs> I'm here when I physically can be. Uh, by the the gods themselves, I've been granted good internet here in Europe uh, for one weekend only. And uh, it's crazy, man. I don't know. I I don't. I know nothing of Europe, and I'm very ignorant to all the things that happen in Italy, but. Um, I'm staying at this hotel that's, it's like a normal Marriott, but it's, there's only one in like every major city in Italy. There's like a Marriott in Milan. There's a Marriott in, uh, Turin where I am. And so like, I'm like, oh, this is great. This is like uh, such a nice upgrade from where I'm staying at during the week. And, uh, I was like, can I get a, can I get a room here next weekend? And the price is like tripled, like ridiculous amount of money for a room here. And apparently there's like some truffle festival going on for the next like two months in Europe and not like chocolate truffles, like mushroom truffles. Yeah. Uh, and like people freak out about it. They just like come from all over the world to just like eat truffles. <laughs> I don't know. Did you ever watch brew brothers? No, I didn't. Okay. So you got time on your hands. You'd, you would oh, enjoy yeah. brew brothers. It only lasted mm-hmm. one season on Netflix because Netflix hates everything good. Yep. Uh, but it's a comedy about uh, these two, this guy who uh, starts a brewery and his mm-hmm. brother comes along and he's like kind of a, a beer snob and blah, blah, blah. But one of the things is the main character uh, spent time in Belgium with monks. Oh. And so he comes back, he, he starts a, a Belgium brewery and that's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And his brother wants to create a beer with truffles. Oh. And he has an old monk friend that smuggles truffles across the border in a very uncomfortable place, like the back of oh, a boy. wagon. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's highly illegal. <laughs> um, it's a funny show, though. I think you'd enjoy it. Yeah, I will say there are there are some comic shops in this city that I'm in. Um, I haven't really done much exploring. Uh, people are still kind of like standoffish to, uh, to U S tourists. So can't um, blame them. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I had like a, there's a place we go for lunch right next to the plant I'm working at. And, uh, the lady like misunderstood me that I said, like, she asked me if I had my green pass in Europe, which is like your vaccine card. And I said like, yes. And I was like, uh, she was like, oh no, no. And she like pointed around the corner and they had this like little seating area that was like walled off from everybody because she thought I like wasn't vaccinated. She was going to put me in like the back alleyway. And I was like, no, no, I'm just going to go eat outside. It's fine. And like <laughs> she like immediately was like, OK, get away from us. <laughs> um, you filthy American. Yeah. So I kind of just like <laughs> I go sit outside at places that I eat where there's outside or I get like delivery to my hotel room uh, because, you know, things are things are still kind of strange as of lately. So, yeah. Um, so you you said you're going to France, right? Next week, two weeks from now. Uh, so I'm in Italy for one more week for seven days. And then, uh, I like go to, I go to Switzerland for a couple days and then I finish, uh, uh, seven days in France. Because yeah. I've heard through the grapevine that France actually has a very strong comics community. Especially, yeah. like, they love manga. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and um, from what I've seen in Quebec, uh, French, French-speaking French Quebec, we, I've seen some French comics in Canada, so uh, yeah. hopefully I could discover something when I'm there. It'd be nice. Yeah. It'd but be cool under a, a more normal circumstance to go there and look around and, like, yeah. immerse yourself into the comics community there. Uh, the crazy part is, you know, there's movie theaters all around me here in Italy, and, like, Dune is playing. I'm pretty sure James Bond's playing already. Um, and I'm like, I, I don't think they have English showings. <laughs> I was like, do I, I mean, do I really just want to sit in an Italian <laughs> James Bond movie? <laughs> I was actually thinking, because I don't, I'm so off the, it's been a crazy, like, 
month and a half, but mm-hmm. I know Dune is out soon. Yeah. It might be I, out now, but I know James Bond's out, and I was like, I think tomorrow, because those are two movies I really wanted to go to the theater to see, and I was like, I think mm-hmm. tomorrow I might go to the theaters, like old man time, you know, like <laughs> noon. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, just by yourself, you know, relax, get the yeah. food to yourself. That's nice. You know, you got to cherish those moments. Yeah, because I want to, obviously I'm a big Bond fan, and Dune's, Dune's up there, one of those, like, books that I read when I was younger that was very influential, so I'm like, I, mm-hmm. I need to see if this movie's good. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, I think the initial reactions were pretty good. Everybody's um, been talking great things about it, so. You know, it's like the calm before the storm because the DC fan dome is coming up. Oh God, uh, don't mind me. <laughs> Honestly, they really just need like the Jersey shore cast to be the sponsors of DC fan, dome, like DJ Polly D or something like as your host. Uh, but I think that's coming in next week, another week, maybe. Yeah. I thought it was the 25th. Um, so I think we're two weeks out. Yeah. They're starting to release some little tidbits here and there. Yeah. Uh, so, Which, by the way, um, everybody, we have an interview today. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry. We always do this. Chris and I don't see each other for a while. Uh, Megan Huang is on the show today. Uh, she's been working with a lot of different uh, publishers for um, really cool variant covers. Um, she also has her own book that she writes and draws called Rangers of the Divide for Dark Horse. So, yeah, um, we'll be semi-professional here and, and try to try to plug her stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, so stick around for that. But uh, Chris and I, you know, we, when we don't see each other, like we see each other every other week, we got to catch up here. So yeah. Yeah. See what's going on. Um, I mean, I guess we could just jump into the little, little bit of news there is. I actually, because I have a lot of free time, I've been watching stuff. Well, can I tell what, one more little anecdote that I, I wanted to tell oh, you? Yeah, sure. Um, you know that? Have you seen that commercial? I think it's for Progressive with uh, I can't remember the name of the rap group, but it's the Scoop. There it is. Oh yeah, yes, yep. So I so I've been having that song stuck in my head for weeks now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I disclose this to friends because you should be able to trust your friends, but I forget that my <laughs> friends are assholes. Um, well, yeah. And so everybody's found these memes now of these guys. Mm-hmm. Going around, so now like every other day, I'm getting memes of this, so the song gets restuck in my head. <laughs> so after that That's for awesome. a week, I was yeah. telling the our local comic shop about it, Bad and idea. and I was like, "Yes," and I told them exactly what I told you. And literally that night, which was last night, I uh, mm. get home and I sit down and I look at my phone and it's the the meme of the girl laying there go he's probably thinking about other women or something like that <laughs> and it's him with the song going through his head and I was like yeah uh, why do all my friends hate me <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome um they wouldn't be your friends unless they did shit like that though that's that's what makes them good friends right yes that's how you know that you have that. real friends yeah um <laughs> Yeah, I you know, and I'm repping I'm repping the boys in blue here. Uh, the Red Sox are in the playoffs, game number three tonight. Uh, I might get to check out some of it tonight. I think the last couple games have been at like two or three a.m. for me, so not really working out. Um, I will say, okay, the best thing about being here though for the the next three weeks, the Dota International tournament had just started. The biggest tournament every year, forty million dollar prize pool. Okay. The group stages where they, you know, try to figure out who's going to play in what bracket is this week and the next week's the main tournament. It's all in my time zone, so like nine to five are Dota matches. Where it's like, if I was in the U.S. right now, I'd be waking up at two a.m. to watch these matches. So there is a little silver lining to being out here. Uh, so I'm just—you could better believe I've just been sitting in my hotel room this weekend watching Dota. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> you got to find the bright spot, right? <laughs> yep. I was like, if Dota wasn't, if the Dota tournament wasn't on this weekend, I don't know what I've done. Probably just kept reading comics. Well, I was just happy to see. Uh, I mean, welcome to Sportscast, everybody. I was just happy to see that the Red Sox yeah. beat the Yankees because when the Yankees lose, we all win. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the very uh, silent and humble fan. Uh, unless you talk shit to me to my face, and then the Red Sox win, and there's no coming back, then I will talk shit to you because you just were gloating the whole time. Longtime fans will know the wrath of Mike making me read <laughs> My Little Pony for a full year. Yes. <laughs> Never forget. If anyone, if anybody's a new fan, um, that was quite a few years ago now, Chris. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Chris lost a bet and was made to read uh, My Little Pony on his poll list for a full year. So, I, so you could probably find those episodes. I don't know if I ever told you, but I sold all those. Oh, and then one day I was going through my comics and I found like one that I missed when I was selling them. And I was just like, "God damn it! Why Who is this in those my life?" You? Someone bought those from you? Oh yeah, I put them on like Macari or something, like the lot of yeah. them for like ten bucks. I'm like, just get them out of my life. <laughs> someone bought them? Yeah, someone with a kid, probably you know, yeah. daughter maybe. You hope. And you hope. <laughs> someone with a kid, you hope. <laughs> Uh, it maybe, yeah. I mean, Might have Brody's, been a Brody. exist. <laughs> Brody's exist in the wild, yes. Uh, Still man. one of those things that confuses me about life, but to each their own. <laughs> yep. So many things. <laughs> um, all right, let's, we'll, we'll talk about this little stuff that we have here. I, I want to talk about, I, I watched uh, Red Sun Superman on HBO, finally. Oh, nice. If you've read the comic, this is pretty much the story. The animation's really good. Um... And it's cool to see Red Sun on a, a, you know, an animated screen. But um, I thought it was really enjoyable for the hour and a half. And he, you know how we talk about these DC animated stuff. Uh, it was just more good stuff from them. And they do a really good job. They treat the properties very well. And I'm sure Mark Miller got a fat check for that. Just what he um, needed. Yeah, another fat check. Uh, Fast Nine. I don't know what I, I. I don't even ask me the name of this one. I don't know what the name was. Fast Nine, the Fast Saga, or something like that. Um. Uh, but I love these movies. I've talked about the Fast and Furious movies. I absolutely love them. Uh, the the quote that I took away from the movie. So they do a lot of like Vin Diesel's origin, and apparently he had a brother when he was younger. Um, they really tie everything together because, like, in the first movie, they talk about Vin Diesel going to jail for like beating a dude with a with a wrench, well, like within an inch of his life. And this we find out is because his father dies, and he he blames it on the racer that you know kills him or was there when he died, and that's the dude he beats in the head with a wrench. So it took nine movies to find out. <laughs> um, man, did it pay off? Uh, and then the brother that is is you know part of this whole thing is actually John Cena. <laughs> um, so no wonder we couldn't see him for eight movies. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he was there the whole time. He, he was there the whole time. We never saw him. Um, the best part though is like there's a quote that uh, uh, Vin Diesel's father in the movie tells him before he goes up in a uh, fiery inferno in his car. Um, is that he says, you don't need to be the stronger man. You need to be the bigger man. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, <laughs> so does that mean lift weights or lift more weights? I don't know. I, obviously he's being, you know, metaphorically bigger man, but have you seen Vin Diesel <laughs> and have you seen John Cena? Because, uh, I think they both took that literally. <laughs> um, <laughs> they it was lift fantastic all the weights. Movie. It really, it really brings home the whole like familia thing that you know Vin Diesel drives home with uh with all these movies. I I will keep watching these movies as long as they make them. And also, my favorite character Han comes back. Uh, the only way they explain that is Kurt Russell is making is really good at making people disappear. Is pretty much what he says. What's um, the, what car did uh, Vin Diesel fly into space? Uh, it wasn't Vin Diesel. It was um. Uh, Ludacris and uh, oh my god, I can't think. Of, I can't think of that one. Tyrese. Yeah. So they pretty much. Uh, yeah, that was another thing. They drive a car into fucking space, and they make these spacesuits held together with duct tape. And uh, yeah, sure. Experiment in the spacesuit with the two black guys. I see how it yep. is. Fast and furious. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really uh, on the nose there, but they. Um, yeah, they made it out okay. 
I think the funniest part about this is uh, Tyrese the whole time talks about, he's like, don't you guys think it's weird that we're kind of invincible? Like, we never die. It, he was like, I just killed, because there's a scene where he, like, grabs a gun from an, like, they fight this, like, militia in, the, in I don't know, it, somewhere in the jungle. And he gets, like, trapped in this, like, in this, like, hole in the ground, and he shoots, like, 20 guys with a machine gun, and they shoot at him, and none of the bullets, like, hit him. And, he and, like, the whole movie, he's like, don't you guys think it's weird that we just survive everything? Like, trying to hint that they're, like, superheroes, and they're like, dude, you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> there's the, and, like, I was like, wow, they're really just driving this home. Um, I like that they're self-aware. Him. Oh, yeah. I, I'll, I just love these movies. Um, okay, so the little bit of news that we have... Uh, James Gunn said in a Twitter post, after Guardians 3, he has another DC project in the works. Uh, I hope so, and I hope it's more Suicide Squad, right? Yeah. Um, Suicide Squad. Or King Booster Shark. Booster Gold. Booster and... Oh. JLI. Justice League um, International, yep. There's, there's a bunch I would love to see him do, but I would assume it's just more Suicide Squad. Hmm. Honestly, like, give him a Justice League Dark movie, but treat it like the Scooby-Doo movie he did. That's what I want. <laughs> I forgot he did the Scooby-Doo movie. Dude, the Scooby-Doo movie's so good! How could you forget? I watched that recently, and it still holds up. Yeah. That man yeah. earned his paycheck. I think if there's any hope... Maybe hope's the wrong word, but there's anything left of wanting to do like a connected universe. Mm-hmm. James Gunn's the guy that you center everything around. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I definitely think you you get him on board. And he said after Guardians three was the end of what he wanted to do with Guardians. So, it, I mean, I he gets to do what he wants to do in Marvel. Cool. Mm-hmm. There's Marvel stuff I'd love to see him do, but if this is what he wants to do is go over to DC and make good DC movies, I want some good DC movies, so <laughs> let's do yeah, it. more of that. More yeah. of that, please. Um, so that's, that's good news to me. Uh, Studio 8 Films has announced that they have casted their lead role for the adaptation of Rob Liefeld's Prophet. Uh, if anybody forgets, Studio 8 is... Uh, is the gentleman from Bad Idea? Or is, oh, is Dina- that's Dinesh? I thought... I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember what his... I thought it was Studio 8. Um, but either way, Rob Liefeld's Prophet comic book. Jake Gyllenhaal will play the uh, the main character of John Prophet, who, for those who don't know, is a Captain America-style super soldier created by Germans near the end of World War II. So, Captain Germany. Uh, Pretty much. Yeah, the only, <clears throat> excuse me, the only uh, prophet I ever read was, uh, was Graham something. I forget his mm-hmm. name, but it's when they kind of, when Liefeld came back to Image and they were gonna, they're revamping all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that, like, years ago? It was around New 52 era. Yeah, and then he got it dropped off again. <clears throat> yeah, because he's Rob Liefeld and he's a crazy yeah. idiot. Um, yeah. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but yeah. Oh, no, I'm fine saying I don't like the man. Uh, yeah. No, he he's he's a jerk for sure. Uh, so I read that because I like the, the artist who has, has since turned out to be an asshole as well. But um, mm. <laughs> it was okay. It, but they completely revamped it to where like he was in a post-apocalyptic universe, but he still had his super soldier serum and everything. So I'm like, I like the premise. Obviously, super soldiers are going to get me every time. I mean, mm-hmm. Captain America. Mm-hmm. Right. But I, what I find interesting here is Jake Gyllenhaal resurrecting his career. <laughs> like, he did Spider-Man. Because before that, you didn't hear him much. And then he's like, he's Mysterio. And we all shat on it. And then it turned out to be awesome. And I, I see feel like we hear his name like every two seconds again. Mm-hmm. So... Uh- did you did you watch Nightcrawler? No. Watch Nightcrawler not. and tell me that his career is over. That movie, I think, won so many awards, and it's fucking insane. But I, I don't think said, his career I, was over. I do. I just think he was on kind of a downswing, where like he 
was really big, and then like we didn't hear about him mm-hmm. much. And then Spider Man came. We're all like, "Oh shit, Jake Gyllenhaal!" And now yeah, I hear right. his name no, for like big name. projects again. Yeah, certainly uh, starring in your own superhero universe as the main character is a pretty big deal. Um, did he do that boxing movie? Because I like he's gonna have to get ripped again, right, to be a super soldier. Oh yeah. Was that him in that boxing? I never watched it. The he was like a UFC fighter or something. Where he was like, I don't think that like was ripped. him. Uh, I'll have to look it up after. Um, all right, TV. What are you watching? Sorry, I was looking. I can't find. I don't think Dinesh is a part of Studio Eight, but uh, okay. Um, football, Seinfeld. <laughs> oh yeah, Seinfeld's on Netflix now. That's a pretty big deal. I feel bad. I'm behind on What If. Uh, the big thing got spoiled for me. Although I don't think oh. it was that. I think it was pretty obvious what they were doing. Um, a big yeah, the, all the different characters from the different stories coming together to create the Guardians of the Multiverse. Oh. Um, so I'm a few episodes behind on that. And what's the other show that's out right now? Why the Last Man? Still haven't watched that. You haven't watched any of it? No. Okay. Oh, uh, Star just... Wars Visions. I haven't watched any of that either. Oh, yeah. I just have not had time to watch the stuff. Uh, I will say, okay, Why the Last Man? I'm on episode five. I think there's another episode. Yeah, to, what's today? Sunday? I can't remember what day it is lately um, because time is weird. Well, but yeah, uh, you are in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we we had Flash break the time stream for us so I could do the podcast at a later date. <laughs> um, but why the last man's really good. Um, that's all I have to say. Like, if you like the comic, you're going to like this and it's, it's been, you know, brought into this new era and timeline in the world that we're in today. Um, and I did start watching. What if I got to the Chadwick Boseman episode uh got really sad and i think i'm taking a break from what if right now um but another fantastic i mean i remember i think you started off saying episode one with peggy carter as uh captain america was like an okay episode yeah um i i've just loved every episode i think they're a lot of fun they have a lot of heart i think they're i think they should just make a, a thousand of these episodes why shouldn't they um I mean, they could they could really just keep making them. I there hasn't been one that I really have liked more than I mean the Chadwick Boseman one was awesome, uh, and like just the the flex of running the intro of names at the beginning of each episode of like yeah we got these actors to come back and do the voices like Kurt <laughs> Russell, you know Chadwick Boseman uh, it was his last thing before he passed. Um, like, you know, Scarlett Johansson, Robert Downey Jr., they're just like, yeah, no big deal. Um, and it's just so fun. It's so much fun to hear their voices. Uh, even uh, I was really surprised by Benicio Del Toro uh, coming back as the collector. Yeah. Um, super jacked collector, by the way. He looked like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character. <laughs> Anybody knows that from the anime. Uh, that was kind of strange. But uh, either way, it's been a lot of fun. So you want to get a little bit more depressed? Uh, there was a report that came out that said mm-hmm. that this whole season, so they were gonna they're gonna keep doing what if that was always the plan, mm-hmm. but this season when it culminated in that Guardians of the Multiverse thing with uh, T'Challa, Star Lord being mm-hmm. the head guy, they were gonna do a spinoff show that was T'Challa, Star Lord, and the Guardians of the Multiverse. Oh man! But now they're not gonna do it because of bozeman's passing uh yeah i mean that would have been so good I, his yeah. he was so good uh and that character was awesome i mean like he took the star lord and made him robin hood <laughs> that was pretty yeah. awesome uh what a crazy little change of the character that was so yeah overall it's been fantastic and then another show i've been watching i think i mentioned it uh only murders in the building uh it's a hulu original okay uh steve martin is the funniest man alive and uh martin short and selena gomez i know i've never really seen selena act in anything but she's uh you can read it about it she's been killing it with this uh show 
I think there's a couple episodes left. Basically, the premise, I wanted to mention it because it's like Clue, but these people are just, the reason they come together is because they're murder podcast fans. <laughs> so there's a murder in their building, and they start a murder podcast about it. Um, and each of them are their own characters, like Steve Martin's this retired cop from television. Um, Selena Gomez kind of has her own secret past. And then uh, Martin Short is like a failed Broadway director. Uh, so it's pretty fantastic. And the like all the the tropes and like all the things about like the type of people that love murder. I mean, everybody loves murder, a good murder podcast, but it's just so much fun how they, they poke fun at that whole community and themselves. And it makes for a really good dark comedy because I mean, there's murders happening, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I, 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 you out. would love it. I, yeah, you would definitely love it. There's, there's a scene that happened recently with Steve Martin and I can't remember the, there's an actress that plays his like girlfriend uh, in the, in the apartment building and they have like a, a date at home and they're playing Scrabble and they, <laughs> They start doing like spelling out like dirty words in the Scrabble, and like every time Steve Martin like spells a dirty word, he like makes like a face, <laughs> and he's just like he's so expressive and hilarious without saying anything at all that it's just like this. Oh man, I, it made me want to go back and watch uh, The Jerk if you've ever seen that with him. Oh uh, yeah, classic movie. He's such a funny guy, so I highly recommend it. Um, yeah. So with that. No further ado, let's jump to this awesome interview with Megan Huang, and we shall see everybody on the other side. And we're back. Hello. We're on the other side. Uh, yeah, check Megan out. She's done a lot of crazy cool stuff. Um, if you haven't read her work, then you might have come across one of the cool variant covers that she's done. Um, some really interesting art that she's doing. So check it out. Um, for the comic book news this week... <laughs> There might have been more comic book news out there, but there's really only one thing that matters, in my opinion. Uh, that is the return um, announced by Mr. Brian K. Vaughn himself during New York Comic Con this weekend, because it had it did happen this weekend. Uh, Saga is finally returning January 26, 2022, with a double sized issue. Hallelujah. Double sized issue for $2.99. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> it's it, what issue 55, the longest cliffhanger in comic books history. I think he said the second story arc. So I'm guessing he's going to wrap this all up with like issue a hundred or something. Um, I get the I feeling from, cause I didn't watch his interview. I read it, but, um, no. I get the feeling this is like act two. Mm hmm. So I almost wonder if he has, because, I mean, it doesn't work out perfectly, but I almost wonder if he has, like, 50-issue uh, acts that he's going for. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's the best comic out. Um, it's one that I you can hand to non-comic fans, and they adore. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it needs to come back. Uh, I, I, know, I know, Brian, uh, you're making a lot of money on those TV things, but... You need to stop wasting your life and do more Saga. <laughs> so, uh, And I can't imagine. I mean, one day Saga. I mean, it's just like Why the Last Man. It's going to be a television show. Yeah, That's it'll be an HBO. It'll be the next uh, Game of Thrones on HBO. Well, they're doing a prequel to Game of Thrones. But after that, <laughs> it'll be the next game. <laughs> yeah. You notice I'm always talking about it because the, the original show sucked. Uh <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, like, I've asked people, I'm like, hey, there's, you know, this new prequel Game of Thrones show, uh, they're like, yeah, whatever, I'm like, alright, I, I saw some dragons. I, I saw people cool. who love Game of Thrones who were so burnt out by that finale, they're just like, oh, okay, more? Yeah, whatever. I don't think you need to do this, if you're bringing me a Lord of the Rings TV show, I don't need the Game of Thrones prequel, I just need the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's uh, gonna be it's, interesting. It's, yeah, especially when... George R. R. Martin himself, you know, says Tolkien is like his biggest influence. If you're writing fantasy and you try to claim that Tolkien doesn't have an influence on you, <laughs> you're you're just factually wrong. Uh, it's wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. Yep. 
no, I but no, the S- uh, saga. Uh, like I said, it's one of my favorite comics, and I'm just so mm-hmm. I'm so happy when I read that. I was sitting around with a buddy, and he looked at me. and He goes, "Saga's coming back in January." And I go, "Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> don't don't play with my emotions like yeah. this." This is. And I looked it up, and I was like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> um, yeah, I. It, it was it was some comic book news that a friend shared with me. Surprisingly, um, I was supposed to be the comic book news guy, but uh, interesting. <laughs> interestingly enough, whenever I go to search anything from my laptop here, it all comes up in Italian. <laughs> so, go figure. Um, <laughs> this is I why we need I mean, one world language, everybody. Yeah. Um, you know how in D and D a basic. We yes. need to come up with basic. Basic. Yeah, just <laughs> grunting. Grunting and pointing. We could go back to that. Um, okay, so I've read some comics. I'm sure you have read some comics. Let's see. Let's see what comics I've read. Okay, I just want to say uh, really quick, I finally uh, read the first volume of Second Coming. Fantastic. Um, yes. I also have gotten the... Only Begotten Son, Second Coming issues. Got to read those. Uh, I have Edgar Allan Poe's uh, Snifter of Terror Volume 1. That is the Ahoy Comics. I haven't read it yet, but I have it in my possession. Um, Okay, so just issues that I've read. I honestly don't know what weeks they've come out because it's all blending together. Uh, Superman, Son of Cal Al, number three. This is the Tom Taylor uh, Superboy story. Uh, It's good shit. if you haven't heard by now, we really like Tom Taylor. Uh, this is a a very nice story about uh, Superman's leaving Earth. Superboy has seen the future because he was part of uh, the Legion of Superheroes, and he's like entrusting the Earth to Superboy. And Superboy is like, you know, I can't save everybody all the time. Kind of, kind of the same conflicts that Superman has really. Faced, and I think it's a really touching story. Tom Taylor is absolutely killing it, and everything else he does. Uh, Batman Reptilian took a weird turn. <laughs> um, have you read this? The latest issue of that? No. Was that issue three or four? Uh, four. Four. No, I've um, not read four. So basically. You know, Killer Croc is like chilling in the uh, in the sewers, and Batman pretty much explains to him that like this creature that's going around killing everybody, Killer Croc is its mother. Um, either Killer Croc is, uh, is female, or can uh, I don't know the the term change sex organs like hermaphrodite. Is that it? I don't think that's the correct. Okay. But I know what you're saying. um, Gender fluid is what you're looking for. Yeah, but there's, I think there's certain, there's certain like, there's certain rept or not reptiles themselves, but like species that can like change their sex organs depending on like what situation they're in. I forget what animals can do that. But either way, that's the explanation. This thing is Killer Croc's uh, pet and... And it like starts licking Killer Croc in the face, and that's how the issue ends. So really, really weird shit is happening now. It it took a strange turn, but I'm interested. I want to see where this is going. Either way, fantastic artwork by Liam Sharp drawing these monsters. Um, Deathstroke oh, no. Incorporated. Oh, sorry, you were right. Uh, okay. Uh, or her, um, oh, Jesus. Hermaphrodite. Hermaphroditism. Yep. Is the yeah. Although I I like how this article puts it as a uh, reproductive flexibility. Nice. That I that's that now that's a superpower. <laughs> that that's a double entendre. I don't know if they realize that. But, so I'm um, sorry. I I thought uh, hermaphrodite was when you had both when you were born with uh, both. Yeah, I couldn't remember. But I was um, correct. Did you read Deathstroke Incorporated number one? No, I had no interest in that. 
it was fun. I mean, he's like capturing villains for a villain or some shit like that. I don't know. I turned my brain off and I read that one. Uh, Justice League. I don't know. Like Justice League. Are you reading Justice League? <laughs> Uh, as I said last time, you read Justice League. I'm way behind on it. Okay, I Bendis is trying to do something with like checkmate and all this other shit. I don't. I've kind of just like knowing that Bendis is like leaving at some point. I just I don't know where he's trying to go with all these characters. Um, he really loves this checkmate group that I have. Just I just have no interest in them at all. What I do have it's an interest so- in what it sounds to me because I read the first issue of. Uh, um, what the hell is it? Leviathan checkmate. Yeah, it sounds to me like those two are going together more than we thought because yeah, and checkmate's I really like right at the center of that story too. And I really didn't care for Leviathan after that first run. So like, but uh, I told you I like the Justice League Dark by Ram V. Um, this is just like a big battle with Merlin, and then he summons the Upside Down Man, which is a pretty bad, pretty bad baddie. Uh, Batman Superman, this was awesome. Did you read this issue? This is yes. number, uh, 22. 22. With, this uh, is a bittersweet issue. Uh, Mixaplex and Calendar Man. Uh, basically Mixaplex saying that, like, you have the ability to, um to alter the alter the universe and like breaks the fourth wall and like you have calendar man like breaking out of comic book panels and like beating up on superman and batman it was a really fantastic issue <laughs> yeah the way mixoplex gave him the ability to basically see the future and told him yeah. that his entire universe is uh segmented into little boxes comic right. panels and that's how he's able to do yeah. it and i loved it i it was so i don't good. Gene Luen Yang is finding weird, fun ways to play with comics in this mm-hmm. series. And it, that's why I say it's sad that it's going away, because this was the last issue. And I, yeah, I hope he what does it, that in something else he's doing. Um, and it says the, the adventures of Batman and Superman continue in the Batman Superman Authority special soon. So I don't know what that means, but... Um, He's going to give that series to Grant Morrison, and it's going to be weird. Uh, Berserker number five. This is that. Uh, this is that book with Keanu Reeves, where he's like some barbarian from the past. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's good. You find out more about his past and where he came from, and uh, I don't know. He's like he's discovering his past. He's, he's pretty, I don't know, like, they, like, flash back and forth between, like, him being in, like, a cryogenic chamber or, like, in a, in a battlefield because he keeps getting regenerated. I don't really know what's happening. I need to, like, stop or reread these issues because I think I'm just messed up with the timeline. I don't mind time jumps, but, like, can you give me, like, you know, a certain hours or days ahead or something? <laughs> Um, I don't know if I'm missing something there. Uh, the new Batman book, uh, the Sphere State shit's still going on. It might be over soon, hopefully. Um, Swamp Thing number eight, this fucking book, man. I cannot say enough good things about uh, Ram V doing Swamp Thing. Mike Perkins' art, fantastic. Um, this is uh, Swamp Thing versus... Um, Oh uh, shit! I can't remember the the cancer the cancer uh, villain that he's just a bunch of uh, he's just a bunch of like toxic waste. So Swamp Thing beats him, and then they send in Parasite. Swamp Thing fights fights Parasite, and they kind of like trade places with each other's minds and see each other's origins, which is kind of crazy. Um, and then Swamp Thing's brother shows up. That's like he's tied to nature somehow. But he's not part of the green, so he's he's part of the red, it seems like. Um, and then the issue ends with a fight with, uh, oh man, the guy with the metal helmet in Suicide Squad. I cannot think of his name. Peacekeeper. Oh, yeah. And basically they're fighting, and, and Swamp Thing says, I pulled the thing out of your brain, uh, the thing that's in your neck, like, 
if you want to keep fighting, that's fine, but, like, you don't have a reason to fight me anymore. And then basically this guy um, that's watching all of this happen uh, sees that Amanda Waller has failed. Um, Mr. Pilgrim, his name is. So he's noticed that Amanda Waller couldn't capture Swamp Thing, and so I think they're sending in to get Swamp Thing uh, uh, Levi's girlfriend to try to, like, make him turn himself in. Uh, it's an awesome book. And I, I can't do it justice with describing like all the amazing, like crazy things that are happening in this book. Uh, but that's all I had. And the last book I, I read last but not least was the fantastic. Um, we have demons by Snyder and Capullo. Uh, <laughs> this almost reminds me of dark Knight's metal a little bit. Um, Basically, uh, what Scott Snyder does here is he creates a connection between heaven and hell and science, like religion and science, that they're kind of like, there's some rootings between both of them. There's demons on the earth. There's also people that have these weapons that are imbued with some type of like heaven or faith. And they've been, you know, put on the earth to fight these demons, um, and that's the story. There's three chapters. It's about this girl whose father uh, gets killed in battle. And he has a partner that's this awesome, crazy, designed looking demon that Capullo draws. And it's probably the best thing I've ever seen him draw. Uh, and that's kind of where we start off in this issue. She's going to become the new monster or demon hunter. Really good. Really uh, gory. Almost reminds me of um, Evil Dead with how much the demons swear and stuff. Uh, fantastic first issue. Um, it's, it's really cool. It, it's worth, it's worth getting comiXology once a month just for that. So check it out. Yeah. We're in Scott Tober. We're going to get a new book every week. I know. Awesome. Uh, you, you didn't read crossover. I did read crossover. Uh, number what? Eight. Yes. Did I? Yeah, I did. I, I feel like I read it a while ago. Did it come out a while ago? Uh, it came out last week. So we're uh, we'll I'm a week it. off. We about it. But uh, first, the uh, the the catch up. So for the video people, this was what they put for oh, last yeah. time on crossover, and yep. it made me laugh. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I, I did read it. And it's literally just page after page of things that happened last one. But this was really just. Uh, so we go back to that guy who was able to predict the future through drawing comic panels yep. and finding out like how things went wrong in his prediction. Uh, we get a, a funny little moment of like, sorry about that whole Chip Zdarsky thing. <laughs> uh, and then the, the characters from the end of the Chip Zdarsky issue pop up, the two uh, characters from Powers, and yep. they end up arresting the 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 kid who was part of like the religious cult. I really liked it. Uh, the ending wh who the kid ends up meeting was really cool. I, I just, it's a great series. Uh, I keep being blown away by it and uh, super excited to continue reading it. Um, Dark Ages number two was we're in kind of the post-apocalyptic universe that we created but what I like is Tom Taylor immediately jumped in and said there's this isn't like a, a normal post-apocalyptic universe. Like people are actually happy and living, thriving and doing all these things. What we find out is that apocalypse was in the background uh, in Europe, creating this, this paradise forum that he's going to take over the world with. And uh, he ends up kidnapping Tony Stark to try to help him and brainwashing him using the purple man. Love what he's doing. Love this, this alternate universe. That's a great book. Um, Thor number 17 was the wrap up to this like mini story he's doing with his, uh, with the Odinson family. And it was really good. It ends with a uh, cap calling Thor and being like, Hey, uh, somebody stole Milner and, uh, you should come back here. <laughs> and, uh, that's going to lead into the next story, which also leads into, uh, the recurring dream that Thor's having about Thanos stealing the hammer and putting the infinity stones on it. 
So that's uh, that's really good. Moon Knight number three was good. It's we, we got kind of the the full introduction of the second Moon Knight character who's trying to kill our Moon Knight and uh, continuation. I I really like it. It's it's not like the most groundbreaking comic ever, but I like Moon Knight and I like what Jed's doing with uh kind of bringing them back to basics and all that. Inferno number one, the last Hickman. X-Men book and it's huge everybody it's got to be at least a triple sized issue <laughs> uh, the the best way to wrap it up is uh, he's just he's creating all these new plot things to, to go forward with and at the end of the day it's just kind of talking about how uh, Moira X told them that there's certain things they can't do and one of them was to bring back Destiny which was Mystique's uh, wife. And throughout this whole X-Men thing, Mystique's been really kind of complaining, like, why can't we bring my wife back? What the hell's going on? And nobody would tell her. Well, apparently she went behind everybody's back and brought Destiny back. And as soon as Destiny comes back, it's supposed to trigger something that leads to the end of mutantdom. Uh, so that's the basics of it. There's a lot more going on in this, but we could do a whole po- hour-long podcast on what happened in this fucking book. Uh, so I won't do that. <laughs> and then the last one I read was a uh, United States Captain America number four, and we kind of figure out what their end game is. Uh, the the villains here are trying to uh, get Hatemonger out of prison, and uh, there's some really funny moments in here where like Sam uh, Sam looks at Cap and goes, "Does anybody ever tell you that you're?" Uh, your entire life is just the oh man, the Godwin's law made real. And anyone doesn't know Godwin's law is the idea that if a conversation goes on long enough, it's going to involve Nazis. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a really funny moment. But then we get to this moment where hate monger is let loose and sin tells them like red skull started the, to change hearts and minds but what we need is a real leader and what better for a, a Nazi movement than the clone of Adolf Hitler. Makes sense. Uh, it's a really good book. I really enjoy it. Um, I, it's sad that Cantwell's not doing more with Cap after this because it's been the most I've been enjoying Cap in a long time. But that's all I got. So Mike, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me at Fortress Ricker on Twitter. Where can they find you and or the show? You can find me at Fortress Chris on Twitter, and they can find the show at Fortress Comics underscore on Twitter or at FortressComicNews.com. Remember, everybody, uh, to give us the reviews on Apple iTunes or whatever podcatcher you use. And I, I need to read up on it, but I know Spotify has a new rating system, so do that as well. And uh, if you're watching us on the YouTube, to like, subscribe, share, comment down below on the video. We always appreciate it. And if you want to go the extra mile, Patreon.com slash Fortress Comics. So I thank you all so much for listening this week. Mike will be back in two weeks, but I'll be here next week with a couple of interviews for you. So look forward to those. Bye, everybody. Bye.